Hey guys, welcome back from spring break. Uh, I hope you were able to do something that was spring breaky, but I also hope that you have continued to be responsible and to uh, do your part in not spreading uh, the sickness uh, as we now enter, I guess, what is really supposed to be month two of uh, all this stuff and we come back from break also knowing that we will not be coming back to school this year so you know this interaction that we're having is basically the only form of interaction that we will have uh from now until the end of the year which means that it's really important um in terms of how we figure out how grades and credit will be determined for the rest of the year that you continue to uh, keep up with these lessons, that you do the work, that you engage as much as possible um, so that we make sure that you are able to hopefully come back to school in the fall ready to do 10th grade work. So I talked a little bit in the last lesson about before spring break about what we were going to be doing um, once break was over. We read Of Mice and Men and we had a discussion about kind of the meaning of the book and um, and all of that. Um, and I said before the break was over that we would be kind of turning our experience with Of Mice and Men into a creative writing opportunity. Um, and so we are going to do that. Um, the ultimate goal is to give you the opportunity to write your own creative um, story before we do one last thing for the year, which will also have to do with some creative writing, but looking at other people's creative writing. Um, so we are going to start working on that today. Our goal today is to talk about how we use imagery to show a setting in fiction. Not, to, not just to tell about what a setting is in fiction, to actually show that setting, to, to create an experience of that setting in fiction. So one of the things that I encouraged you to do over break was to think about, well, if I could tell any story or if I have a story that I want to tell, where would that story take place and when would that story take place and what would be happening and all of that. All of that is detail that has to do with the setting. Uh, so now what we're going to start doing is fleshing that out uh, and really, um, first of all, fleshing it out using imagery. So um, there is going to be a bit of information here. I'm going to encourage you before we go any further to pause and get ready to take notes as you're watching the remainder of this video. So now that you have gotten your notes ready and you're going to uh, take those notes however they look, uh, then let's talk first about what imagery is and how you should use it. And when I say should, like there's not a right or wrong way to use imagery. It's not like if you use imagery and it's good, but it's not used in this way, you're doing it in the wrong way. But there are more effective ways to do it. And that's kind of what I mean uh, when I say should. Um, I've also given you this little picture over here on the right to imply what imagery is, because a lot of times we think of imagery as just images or pictures. And while that is a part of imagery, it's not the entire uh, the entirety of imagery. Imagery is actually a whole bunch of stuff. So what imagery is, is at least in fiction and in writing, imagery is words or yeah, words that create physical sensations. And we all know that physical sensations are not just limited to, to what we think of as, as pictures. So anytime words are, are used to create physical sensations, and the reason that this is important to understand is because physical sensations produce emotional responses. We've all read the boring stuff. You've probably read plenty of boring stuff in my class, right? And one of the reasons that we find things boring is because we are not emotionally engaged with what we're reading. But when we write fiction, we want to be emotionally engaged. We want to have those feelings that get us that put us in the place, right? That allow us to experience the place. And a lot of that comes down to physical sensation. So when we can physically experience a place, then we can understand that place and um, become emotionally attached to that place. 
So let's be clear on what physical sensations are because they're not just pictures. Physical sensations are sight, sound, taste, smell, and touch. So we've all had that experience where, you know, we see something that reminds us of, you know, the good times or the bad times and we have that emotional response. But we've also had those experiences where we taste something and we're like, oh, that tastes like, you know, grandma's house or, or we, um, we hear a song that reminds us of, you know, the, 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 our first boyfriend or girlfriend, or we smell something that reminds us of a trip that we went on, or, you know, we, we touch something that feels like, um, that, that feels like the blanket that we had when we were baby, or, you know, all of those kinds of things are physical sensations that are creating emotional responses. And they don't have to be positive emotional responses either. They can be complicated. They can be negative. They can be, you know, any number of emotional responses, you know, uh, the sound of fingernails on a blackboard, which also is a, you know, a touch thing is going to create an emotional response, right? But it's not just a picture, right? It's sound, it's touch, it's maybe, uh, um, yeah, and anyway, it, it it's creating that emotional sensation rather than just saying like, you know, here's a picture of somebody putting fingers on a blackboard, right? So um, that's the important thing. Now, how do we use it? Well, we we use imagery. You can create, you can use words to create these physical sensations in any number of ways. Obviously, you're going to need verbs and adjectives and nouns and all of those things. But what I'm going to encourage you to do is to really think about the way that you use verbs to give life to your imagery. You know, like I said, you need nouns and you need adjectives and, and adverbs and and all of those things in order to create imagery. But verbs are gonna do a lot of heavy lifting for you. So let's look at this example. If I wrote the sentence, the baby had poofy fluffs of dark hair that felt ticklish. We have the image of the baby with dark hair. We have a little bit of, of uh, touch. It says it felt ticklish, right? Well, what is, what is the feeling of ticklishness? Um, you know, poofy fluffs of black hair. Okay, there, there's the picture of this baby. It's it's fine. It's not that we don't have a little bit of, of an image there, but if we compare that, and well, first of all, we look at the verbs and we have two fairly boring verbs, had and felt. All right, that, you know, they're fine. They, they, they do a basic job, but if we rewrite this sentence like this, fluffs of dark poofy hair tickled my nose as the baby nestled in for a nap, the, the image is essentially the same. We have, you know, the experience, uh, the, the, the ticklish feeling is there, but now it's under our nose. We can place the baby. The baby's obviously close enough. His head or her head is close enough to be kind of underneath our our nose so we know that we're holding the baby. Um, we know that the baby is nestling in for a nap so we get a sense of not just that this is a picture of a baby with dark poofy hair but that this baby is attached emotionally attached to us that it's kind of nestling in right that there's a there's a sense of kind of warmth and companionship and and even love there that isn't it's not there in the first sentence. It just isn't. We just have a baby with some hair and we know that at some point that hair has felt ticklish. But this is a whole experience and we get this kind of nice warm emotional response from the baby. So as you're writing imagery, when you think of, you know, what kind of, what kind of physical sensation am I going to create for this, this world that I'm, that I'm building in my fiction, you want to be thinking about you know, not just what does it look like or what does it sound like or what does it um, smell like or, you know, all feel like or taste like or whatever it is that's important to building your world, but what kinds of verbs and experiences are going to allow that world to really come to life? You know, instead of saying, I ate an orange and it was tart, you could say, the tartness of the orange danced on my tongue and it all of a sudden makes that experience of eating the orange exciting rather than just saying it was, you know, that this is what the orange tasted like, right? So let's look at one last example. Um, this is a professional example. 
uh, of imagery and setting from Of Mice and Men. And this is from the very beginning of the book. So it says, a few miles south of Soledad, the Salinas River drops in close to the hillside bank and runs deep and green. On the sandy bank under the trees, the leaves lie deep and so crisp that a lizard makes a great skittering if he runs among them. Rabbits come out of the brush to sit on the sand in the evening, and the damp flats are covered with the night tracks of coons and with the spread pads of dogs from the ranches and with the split wedge tracks of deer that come to drink in the dark. Now there's no denying that there's plenty of imagery here. The whole thing is basically a picture of, of the Salinas River Valley in, in California. It's very beautiful. Um, but you can also kind of see how he's using verbs. Uh, the river is dropping close to the hillside, right? Like we get the sense that it's in motion, it's going, that, that it's running deep and green. Again, the, the motion of it. Um, uh, the, the lizard is making a great skittering as he runs among these leaves that are lying deep, right? So like, we get the images, the, the, the actual picture of these leaves on the ground, but we also get the whole movement of the, of the lizard on top of the leaves and the scratching, you know, this, this, the, the skittering, scratching sound of a lizard running across them. There's movement there, right? Like there's, there's just a life to this place. The rabbits uh, sitting on the sand in the evening, you know, this kind of placid, you know, the rabbits there. Uh, and then we get just the pictures of the different tracks and the sense of life that's around it, right? The tracks of the of the coons look different uh, than the pads of the dogs and the split. So we we just really have this sense of movement and life and and nature there that you know makes us kind of attached to um, to this place that otherwise if we just said you know there was a river and there were lizards and there were tracks it would be very bland we would have a picture of it but we wouldn't have this nice emotional feeling sense of of place so it's really in my opinion in here the verbs are creating this kind of sight and sound we can also get a kind of a secondary sensation of maybe smell and touch you know, once we get those sights and sounds and we know that we're by a river, we might get a, a you know, like we, our mind is allowed to then smell the river and like understand, you know, what, you know, this kind of sandy bank or the, the coolness of the river. You know, like we, our mind can start filling in the blanks and we get a very nice um, kind of emotionally calming sense of this, of this place that we start out with in the story. So how does this apply to what we're going to be doing tomorrow? Tomorrow's activity is going to be a writing activity, um, and it is going to be helping you establish um, your setting in your story. Obviously, you're going to be using imagery. Um, and what I want you to think about, or I want you to anticipate, are what physical sensations you might use to describe the setting of your writing. So if at this point you haven't spent much time thinking about what you might write for this um, project, you probably want to think about that. And you don't even have to have a story yet, so much as if you just want to start with a setting, that's fine. You know, if you just want to create a place and then you can figure out the story later, that's fine. Um, we'll, we'll start off really kind of easy and we'll just see where this goes. So if you do have a story that you want to tell and you know you know what the setting is great you're going to practice fleshing that out a little bit but if you don't have the story and you just want to create a place um then just create a place and we'll see where it goes from there but what i want you to think about for tomorrow's activity is what kinds of physical sensations are you going to use to describe that place and especially what kinds of verbs would be appropriate to creating those physical sensations and i look forward to seeing what you write tomorrow <laughs>